Jehovah's Witness Publisher Statistics. This video is based on an article that contains the most detailed summary of Jehovah's Witness statistics that appears on the internet. It graphically presents Watchtower statistics going back to the year 1960 and is taken from Watchtower's own annual publisher reports. Since 1995, statistics for the Watchtower Society have rapidly become less encouraging for Jehovah's Witnesses. In almost every indicator, most dramatic has been the increase in the number of people leaving, along with the number of hours required for a single convert. This is now over 12,000 hours of preaching just to have one additional publisher. American studies show that Jehovah's Witnesses have the highest turnover of any major religion in the United States, such as through the Pew Report. An even more extreme example of what might be called masked churn is the relatively tiny Jehovah's Witnesses with a turnover rate of about two-thirds. That means two-thirds of the people who told Pew they were raised Jehovah's Witnesses no longer are. Yet, the group attracts roughly the same number of converts. And this is actually backed up through the statistics that we're going to see today from Watchtower's own annual report. So how many do leave each year? Well, if you look at the 10 years from 1996 to 2005, there were 2,968,000 baptisms, and yet an increase of only 1.4 million publishers. This shows that 1.5 million people actually stopped publishing in that period of time. Even if you account for the annual death rate, that is over a million publishers that ceased during a 10-year period. The majority of growth is now coming from developing countries in Africa and South America. For example, in 2016, 70% of the increase came from just seven countries. That's Angola, Brazil, Ecuador, Ghana, Mexico, the Republic of Congo and Nigeria. On the other hand, developed countries with the highest level of wealth, education and internet access had very little to zero growth. In 2016, many of these countries reported less publishers than the previous year, such as Britain, Australia, Germany, Italy, USA, Canada and Japan. The following figures highlight important trends and show a significant drop in growth and an increase in the percentages leaving. More reliance can be placed on these trends rather than the specific numbers due to the limitation in how Watchtower reporting is. For instance, hours preaching required per baptism is limited in that it cannot be determined how many baptisms were newly interested people from the territory as opposed to children that were raised in the religion. Also, the figures for publishers include those who are not yet baptised, as a publisher can include someone who goes door-to-door -door preaching but hasn't yet done but their baptism. And it cannot be determined how many of these publishers then go on to be baptised. Watchtower has changed the criteria over the years so that now a person can be considered a publisher who only does 15 minutes of preaching in an entire month, whereas the minimum used to be one hour. And for that reason, We'll look here at more the growth in trends or the decrease in trends rather than concentrating on the specific number year by year. Okay, so let's look firstly at average publishers. Average publishers are a better statistic than peak publishers because peak publishers can include months where a single publisher puts in several reports at the same time, such as in August, the end of the reporting year, when the elders may try and get all the publishers who haven't reported, the irregular ones, to put all their reports in that one month, and then that will create an artificial peak. So we'll rather examine average publishers. Now in the five years prior to 1975, the number of publishers was increasing at up to 14% per year. During the 1980s and 1990s, growth continued at around 5% per year. This has now fallen to between 1% and 3%, hardly more than the world's population growth rate. Now, considering a large number of new publishers are teenagers that were raised as Jehovah's Witnesses, this indicates that with two billion hours of preaching, Watchtower can only replace the ones that are leaving that were raised as Jehovah's Witnesses. The increase in Jehovah's Witnesses' average publishers peaked at around 250,000, and that was back in 1995 has since declined to half that rate, around 100,000 per year. 
The following graph highlights the consequence that such a decrease has on the number of Jehovah's Witnesses and powerfully demonstrates the effect of compounding growth. The rate of growth of publishers dropped from an average of 5.64% per annum over the 15 years prior to 1995 to 2.45% between 1995 and 2014. Now, had growth remained at that 5.5% rate, the 4.9 million witnesses in 1985 would have exceeded 14 million Jehovah's Witnesses in 2014. Instead, in 2014, there was only 8 million witnesses, a difference of 6 million. Factors on conversion and retention, such as internet education, resulted in a growth of only 2 million instead of 8 million, just a quarter of that expected in 1995. Baptisms. The number of baptisms reached an all-time high of 375,000 in 1997. Since then, there has been a rapid fall in baptisms of 30% to an average of only 250,000 per year. When comparing baptisms to the increase in average publishers, there is over 100,000 people unaccounted for each year, and this will be examined in more detail later. Baptisms are less than half of what they were in the 1990s when compared as a percentage to average publishers. Strikingly, the number of baptisms gravitates around double the number of increase in average publishers, which shows that about 50% are leaving each year. One of the most striking statistics is the hours preaching per conversion. In 1969, there was one baptism for every 1,983 hours of preaching. During the uh, 1980s, it had risen to 3,000 hours per baptism. In the 15 years from 1997 to 2011, the number of hours of preaching required per baptism increased from 3,000 to 6,000, an increase of 100%. More significant, though, is the number of hours required for an additional publisher due to the large increase in the number of witnesses that are leaving each year. The number of hours required for an additional publisher doubled from 4,000 in the early 1990s to 8,000 in 2000. It then went to 12,000 in 2014, which is a 300% increase in hours required in just 20 years. Of gravest concern to the governing body must be the rapidly falling conversion rate, the percentage of Bible studies that actually progress to baptism. This has dropped dramatically, with the annual number baptised compared to average Bible studies falling from a high of around 1 in 5 or 22% prior to 1975 to now a mere 1 in 33 or 3%, 22% down to 3%. During the 1980s and 90s, the conversion rate was consistently around about 8%. This has steadily declined to less than 3% in 2014. One thing to note is that just prior to 1975, the conversion rate went up to over 20%, double what it had been 10 years earlier. So when Jehovah's Witnesses say that there was nothing special proclaimed about 1975, even the statistics themselves, let alone all the articles, show that there was a significant influence on people's mindset. Now whilst there is roughly one Bible study conducted each month for each publisher, only a minute amount of these ever progressed to baptism. Despite the number of studies doubling to 9 million in the 20 years from 1995 to 2014, the number of baptisms is actually decreasing, plummeting from around 350,000 per year in the 1990s to flatlining around about the 275,000 mark for the last few years. Growth compared to total publishers. This graph highlights the very small amount of growth compared to the entire number of Jehovah's Witnesses globally. Growth in congregations. Because few religions actually report on um, the numbers of people preaching, they don't even have to report, it's more of an informal preaching work they carry out, the number of congregations provides a better way for different religious groups to be able to compare each other. Now the figure for average publishers doesn't include uh, newly interested ones or the youth that are coming along. From this graph we can see a slow but steady increase in congregations over the years. One thing that has happened is that the average number of publishers 
per congregation has increased from 52 in 1970 to 68 in 2010. Again, the percent increase in congregations is going down um, over the decades. From this information that's been provided, I've made a number of extrapolations. I want to make clear that these are not, it's not an exact science here because of factors I already mentioned. Um, but again, it's very interesting to see the trends that really come out. It's very interesting to see the number that are leaving. From this table here, the number missing has been calculated as the average publishers from the previous year plus baptisms less the average publishers this year. And you see how many are missing. And this rate has grown quite dramatically over the years to well over 100 to 150,000 a year now that are leaving. We can see now that the percentage of the ones that stop publishing is gravitating up around the 50% mark. Now to be fair, there is a number of people that die each year and the average death rate on a global basis is now 0.85%. So I've redone this graph, taking out the ones who have died, to see what number of people are actually um, voluntarily leaving, either through being disfellowshipped or becoming inactive on their own behalf. To this, I included the number of disfellowshipped. Around about 1% of Jehovah's Witnesses are disfellowshipped each year, and about only one-third of those Jehovah's Witnesses ever come back to the religion. And so if I include 0.66% uh, for the numbers that are disfellowshipped each year, that's the net amount, then from this I can work out how many people are actually leaving of their own accord. Now these ones that leave of their own accord are the ones that become inactive. Inactive is a term amongst um, the Watchtower for people that have not reported any preaching for a period of six months or more. The number of inactive ones, those that stop publishing, is really made up of three figures. They're the ones that have died, obviously, the ones that have been disfellowshipped, but then there's also the ones that have voluntarily stopped preaching. And uh, to the former Jehovah's Witnesses, these ones that voluntarily stop preaching are known as faders. Now this, uh, this category of faders has seen a significant increase since 1995. However, they are also the most volatile group because uh, some of these faders have not really determined that the Watchtower Society is not the true religion. They just um, stop. And so often, because they're still unsure of their beliefs, they will get reinactivated whenever there is a period of crisis. If you look at the graphs here, you'll see that there's a few years where the number that fade out is actually a negative amount, which means that there's more people coming back into preaching than are leaving at that particular time. And these are during periods of crisis. So when we had 9-11 um, with the World Trade Center Terrorist Act, uh, that created a lot of concern in, in people's minds who didn't really um, understand whether the Watchtower is true or not. And uh, so they got reactivated. Happened again in 2008 during the midst of the global financial crisis. And there was also a number of um, quite significant earthquakes at that period of time. And then again in 2014 when um, it was the 100th year anniversary of, of Jesus' apparent invisible presence according to the Watchtower. These people that fade and then get reinactivated are quite volatile because then they'll fade out again often. And so these are actually really quite weak-minded individuals um, that they are unable to really make a determination about whether they believe it's the truth and work hard for it or whether they've come to understand that it is not the true religion. Breakdown by continent, 2011. Comparing the number of Jehovah's Witnesses by continent highlights how dependent one's chance of being a Jehovah's Witness is on their place of birth. As an American religion, the Americas have the highest saturation of Jehovah's Witnesses, with one witness for every 249 people. This is followed by Europe and then Oceania. Now these are all traditionally Christian continents, and it immediately becomes apparent that the likelihood of becoming a Jehovah's Witness is dependent on being born in a Christian country. Africa has about half the rate of Witnesses of Europe, which follows on from Africa being fairly evenly split between Muslims and Christians. Christian African countries have high witness density levels similar to Latin America. In Hindu and Muslim countries, such as in Asia and the Middle East, there is a tiny fraction of Jehovah's Witnesses. This is uh, signified by this very tall green column. So despite a population of over 4 billion people in Asia and the Middle East, half the world's population, 
the number of publishers increased in that particular year by only 12,000. Five year figures. Comparing uh, the statistics over a five year time frame evens out some of the spikes. And then if we look at this, we see again that there's several hundred thousand people every five years that end up uh, leaving the religion. It comes out again at about half the people that are baptized. Memorial attendance. Growth in memorial attendance aligns closely with the growth in publishers and represents about 2.6 times the number of publishers. The difference was 2 in the 1960s but steadily increased until it stabilised at about 2.6 since the 1980s. Many of these attendees could be considered fence sitters, hedging their bets that if Armageddon is real and does occur, they'll jump back on board just beforehand. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 says, Jehovah is not slow respecting his promise, as some people consider slowness, but he's patient with you because he does not desire any to be destroyed, but desires all to attain to repentance. The Watchtower explains that the last days have continued for so long because Jehovah desires all to attain repentance. For example, the Watchtower 2006 says, he is exercising patience and is having the good news declared in all the earth so that people may have every opportunity to live. The Watchtower teaches that only Jehovah's Witnesses will survive Armageddon. As we've seen from these graphs, your chance of ever hearing about Jehovah's Witnesses is next to none in over half of the world. Every single day on average there is over 200,000 people born but only 224 that convert to being Jehovah's Witnesses. So this scripture does not make any sense if it's applied to Jehovah's Witnesses, that Jehovah is holding off Armageddon so that everyone has the opportunity to live. In actual fact, every day that Armageddon has been held off since 1914, more and more people are going to be destroyed. In fact, billions more are going to be destroyed, and about 200,000 every single day are lined up for destruction if Watchtower doctrine is correct that only Jehovah's Witnesses will survive Armageddon. Another thing commonly stated by Watchtower is that Jehovah is speeding up the work. For example, in 1988 it said, Jehovah is now speeding up the ingathering of sheep like ones. Surely then this is no time for his people to slow down in their kingdom preaching and disciple making work. Statistics show that this is no longer true. Watchtower growth is steadily slowing. It will take major policy change for the Watchtower Society to have a hope of turning around this trend and to start growing at any significant rate. The expectation is that Jehovah's Witnesses will get to a zero and then eventually a negative growth rate over the coming years and decades.